Today we'll be reviewing how to get started with the Lynx software suite from Maxim Attack. This software suite will allow you to begin working with the Maxim Attack provided software for the displays mostly, but also for controllers and, and other things. Um, as we'll see going forward, the Lynx software suite packages in many of the libraries, the compilers needed to begin working with the displays, which we'll primarily focus on, and it will ease the transition to getting software up and running on the displays. So in this video, we will pretty much just be downloading and getting started uh, booting up the virtual machine uh, which is where we provide the link software suite. So as a basic, um, some basic information before we get started with this, uh, the link software suite is a set of tools that Maxima Tech has provided in what's called a virtual machine. So the virtual machine you can think of as a virtual computer. This allows us to package all of these tools nicely in its own virtual computer instead of having to have every user install the compiler and link it to the correct um, the correct directories and things like that we're able to pre-set up all of these things for the user and ease development um, so there's a lot of information on virtual machines online and for further information on the link software suite i will in in this uh in the text of this video link to a overview of the link software suite what it encompasses what it will do uh definitely worth checking out um the if you are going forward with only Codasys, this doesn't need to be installed. You, If you plan to use Qt or the Maxima Tech provided widgets and libraries, then uh, please move forward in this video. You will need to install or it will definitely ease your development to install our Lynx virtual machine. Okay, so now that all the preliminaries are done, um, I am at the support.maximatech.com website here. If you haven't signed up or visited this website, uh, please do so now. Um, when, let me sign out here and I'll show you what you'll see. Uh, so when you first visit this website, it will look like this, and there'll be a login page. If you do not have a, a login and password, you will need to request one. Um, so you can click here to create a new account, and um, it'll ask you to fill out some basic information about yourself, about your company. This will be, once you create an account, this will be sent to our uh, web team who will pretty much grant you access within most likely a day or two. Um, so I already have an account created and I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Okay, so the support site is our main portal for documents for any information on pretty much any of our products, uh, any technical information really. We also have the basic product brochures and things like that, um, but on our support site you can find uh, not only technical information, but all the software tools and things like that that you're going to need. Um, so for this, what we're going to do is go to product information here. And what we're looking for is the Lynx software development system. Um, so if we move to software, 
on the left, you'll see different software listed here. Um, a lot of this is a little bit outside the scope, but it will be covered in other videos. Quick is a tool that we use for our CC Pilot VI display, which is the three and a half inch. It is the only display that is not on our main software system, uh, which runs either Lynx or Codasys or a combination of those two. Um, so all of our other displays from five inches to 15 inches uh, are able to run Lynx, Codasys, or as I said, a combination. So in this case, uh, we're going to go to Lynx because that's what we're installing in this video. And here you will see a bunch of software. Um, so I can go over what a lot of this means, but for now, let's, we want to find this one, the Link Software Suite Development Environment version 2.02. Um, and as a note, you know, as we, we routinely upgrade our development environment, maybe once to twice a year, depending on updates we've made to the software. So as you're watching this video, it, it may be a different, more updated version. Um, so just keep that in mind. So we're going to click on this and save it. Uh, in this case, I've already done this, so I won't need to do it again, but the process, you know, just save as and save to anywhere on your computer. Um, okay. So as you see here too, that's, it's a very large file, 3.08 gigabytes. So, um, it will most likely take a while to download. So while we are, while that's downloading, um, the second thing we're going to need to begin working with the link software suite is you can see this logo here. Um, it's a program called VirtualBox. So VirtualBox allows you to run a virtual machine. So this that we just downloaded is a virtual machine or a file that allows the creation, allows for the creation of a virtual machine. The, the program to run it is that, that we use by default is called VirtualBox. There are other programs out there that also run virtual machines similar to VirtualBox. The most common one is called VMware. And um, this VMware, we, we used to use VMware, but uh, it does not have the licensing for it. Technically, you're not supposed to use it as a corporate user. Um, so this was an issue for some of our customers. So we moved to VirtualBox, which has no restrictions for corporate users. Um, so I would recommend using VirtualBox, but if you are used to using VMware already, then there are ways to convert the virtual machine we provide in VirtualBox format to the format needed for VMware. Uh, just keep that in mind. Feel free to email our technical team and we can help you out in that. Um, so we are going to move to virtualbox.org here. And this is the VirtualBox website. To download the most recent version, we're going to go to downloads. And you want to most likely download for Windows. I'm, I'm using a Windows host at least. Uh, if you are using a Linux host, you can move here. Um, but in this case, you can VirtualBox 5.0. 1.6 for Windows host uh, here. And again, I have this installed, but uh, you can go ahead and install it there. Okay. Um, so once we have VirtualBox installed, I'm just going to go ahead and open it. So as I've mentioned, I've 
already installed it and used it a long time ago, uh, you know, once you download it from here, you would install VirtualBox just like any other Windows application. Um, you know, I think this gives you a an exe or zip file and it will auto install for you. Um, so once we have it, this is the the logo of VirtualBox, uh, and I can see it here as well in my programs list. Uh, I believe under Oracle. So Oracle VM VirtualBox. We can go ahead and open that. Um, mine's going to look a little different than yours because I have, as you can maybe see, a lot of different virtual machines already running. So when you first open it, this will be blank. Um, but we can go ahead and uh, go through the process without or with mine, you know, already being populated. So when you download the virtual machine, which we downloaded in the previous step, uh, it will give you a zip file. And what you're going to do is just extract that zip file. And once that's done, you should see files similar to this. So you should have logs, Snapchat, or snapshots, uh, and the really important ones are this Lynx uh, VM as well as the Lynx software suite development environment. I think maybe when you first, yeah, you may just have this VDI file when you first open and extract. And then once you create the virtual machine, these two may be created. Can't quite remember, but we'll, uh, we'll go through this. So once that's done, what we're going to do is come to the machine setting here and say add. And we're going to find where we extracted the virtual machine that we downloaded. So in my case, I've saved it uh, to my libraries in this version 2.02 new. Um, so if I double click this folder, I will see this Lynx software suite development environment version 2.02. Um, now, if I click open, it'll give me an error because I already have that machine created here. Um, but for you guys, since you won't have any virtual machines and should not have this one already created, uh, you should click open and you should see it added here to the virtual machine list. So once that's done, you have the virtual machine on your computer. Um, we're gonna really quick before we start it up, go over a couple preliminary settings for it. So once that's added here, click on it and click settings. Um, so First, we're going to go system. So the system defines essentially the system settings for the virtual machine. Uh, these will look different depending on your host computer's settings. So in my case, I have 8 gigs of RAM on my host computer, and I've chosen to use 2 gigs for the virtual machine. Most of the settings that this virtual machine comes with should be fine as the default settings, but you can adjust if you want some of the settings to make the virtual machine faster or slower um, as needed. One note here is if this tab acceleration is grayed out and you're not able to see or select these, you may need to turn on uh, this enable VTX in your computer's bio settings. If this is the case, just Google enable VTX in BIOS and instruction should come up about how to do that for your computer's BIOS settings. Most computers, most laptops though have this enabled and if it's not enabled, sometimes it, it won't affect the running of the virtual machine. Um, 
the hardware virtualization will, I believe, make it run a little faster. So it might make sense to enable it if it is not. But uh, it shouldn't stop it from running correctly. Um, OK, the next thing we want to do is come to this storage tab. So by default, your controller IDE probably will have nothing under it. Um, so I'll go ahead and delete this and uh, show you guys. So it'll look like this. Uh, we want to add an optical drive. So we're going to click here and you're going to get a question come up. You can either choose a disk or leave it empty. In our case, we're going to leave it empty. Um, all right, so now we have that. Uh, network should be set at NAT. We'll kind of go over this in the next video, though. Um, we'll go over shared folders in another video and some of the different settings for USB as well. So once that's complete, just hit OK. And we can double click the virtual machine to start it up. This might take a second to start up. Um, so there, <clears throat> there is an issue that we've had with these virtual machines on some computers. So we, the first time you start this virtual machine, I will go directly to the laptop because I've started it before. But the first time you start, you'll get a Maxima Tech user agreement that pops up. I believe you just have to say agree and then click continue and you should move to the desktop. We've had some users that when they hit agree and continue, instead of moving to a desktop, it just looks like this, like a black screen. And it'll stay like that for a while um, or really forever. It'll never move to the desktop. So if that happens, uh, check the the settings that we did here so this when we went and added this controller empty uh disk here that has solved that issue in the past for every user that's experienced it so if you do run into that uh, make sure you've added that blank disk in the storage settings. Um, okay, so the virtual machine started up and you can see, you know, I'm running, this is a virtual machine. So here's my virtual desktop of a Kubuntu Linux machine. Um, but yet I'm still running Windows under it. So the Windows 7, my main computer is my host machine and then the guest or virtual machine is this Linux Kubuntu. Um, okay, so your desktop should look something similar to this. So I've used these virtual machines for a while and I've customized it a bit. So you won't see these two items and you won't see some of these uh, icons over on the left here, but you should have Qt Creator up and Codasys and field bus success and data engine server app. Um, all right, so I think this pretty much concludes the video. Uh, if you've gotten this far, you've installed the virtual machine, you have it up and running. In the next videos, we'll go over virtual machine configuration and how to begin using it. All right, thanks.